You've probably faced the challenge of how to take great photos and animations from an interior scene in Unreal Engine 5. What are the principles? What are the camera framing rules? Therefore, you must know the art of this work. You must know how to convey the feeling of a space to the audience and induce it. So let's get down to the business and see how it is done. Hey there guys, I hope you are doing well. So here we have a modern interior scene and all we want to do is to take some cool pictures and animations from it. So first of all, let's take a look at the project. And as you can see, there is a living space here and a backyard over there. And finally, we have another living space here. So here we start. We want to take cool photos and make great animations and have a storytelling with our sequences. So in this regard, tip number one, use wide shots. There is a quote in the cinema industry that says that a wide shot is the director's best friend. For example, I want to introduce this living space of the house. So I used a camera with a focal length of 24mm and I set it behind the table but the focus is on the desired space. And if I play the sequence, you can see that the camera starts to move from behind of the table to the top of the living space. Well, what this sequence does is that in addition to introducing the desired living space to the audience, it creates a sense of curiosity in the audience. And the sense of curiosity means that the audience wants to know what other spaces in the house look like and how they were designed. By the way, if you want to create keyframes for the sequencer, you can watch and learn it from the video which has appeared in the upper corner of your screen. So now that we have done that, let's go to the next tip. Tip number two, use middle close-up shots. This shot is used when you want to draw the audience's attention to something important in the scene. But you're probably asking if this origami is an important thing in the scene right now. Well, it may not seem very important, but paying attention to details in the scene can make your work look very professional. So now let's take a look to the camera settings of this shot. And I set the sensor aspect ratio of this camera on 1.37 and the focal length has set on 65. And finally, we come to the aperture, which controls the amount of blurring of the background and you can see that the more I decrease this amount, the more the blurring on the stage increases, but I think 5.8 seems appropriate for this shot. Tip number three, rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a common compositional technique that divides your frame into an equal three by three grid with two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. The rule of thirds places your subject on the left third or right third or down third of the frame creating a pleasing composition. And as you can see, I match this vertical line exactly to the vertical line in the middle of the origami and placed half of the subject in the left third and the whole subject in the lower third of the frame. Of course, this is one of the techniques used in framing and there are many of them which we will talk about in future projects. Well, after closing two wide and medium close-up shots, to show the audience this project from another angle, I want to place the camera at an angle that will show the backyard and show the audience that there is also another floor, of course, to create a sense of curiosity in the audience again. Well, I think this angle is appropriate but maybe adding an upward motion to the sequence can make the work more interesting. So let's jump into the camera that I've placed for this shot. And as you can see, I named this camera vertical. So trip number four is to use different aspect ratios. The reason is that I first want to draw the viewer's attention to the upper floor and also that I have vertical elements such as columns and stairs in this shot. So I set the aspect ratio on 0.97 and because I want to have sharp depth of field in this scene, I'm gonna increase the aperture value. So now that we have done that, let's jump into the sequencer of this shot and then let's just play 
the sequence and as you can see here we have a very attractive sequence you can also use frames like this one i mean with the vertical aspect ratio in different social media platforms like instagram all right that's all for this shot and let's just quit the sequencer of it and there is also another space that we want to introduce to the audience and it is over here this living space and while we are framing this area we are gonna learn tip number five use middle white shots but before that it is necessary to reduce the exposure of the camera a little in order to reduce the burns caused by the light in the scene so in this regard i'm gonna type the exposure word in the details section and here it is so let's reduce this parameter a bit to achieve a better light balance in the scene and yeah this is what i was looking for so let's continue as you can see i've chose a full frame dslr for the film back to achieve this image size and in order to get a mid white shot in this scene i have set the focal length of the camera on 32. as you can see the choice of this lens has made us to introduce the target space to the audience but there are still other spaces in the image and I draw the audience's attention to them even less well I added a few keyframes to move the camera to a very small amount to animate this sequence in this way so now that we've done that let's just continue and finally we come to the last shot but this frame requires that there is no daylight inside so in this regard, I'm going to change the amount of longitude parameter in the sun and sky actor to achieve a night light. And yeah, this looks much more better, so let's continue. And I'm going to change the viewport to my last camera. And I will add another viewport for better control of the actors and the scene. And eventually, tip number six, use close-up shots. As I said before, Close-up shots is used to introduce and deal with the details of the scene. So try to choose a subject on your scene and shine a studio light on it and use a telephoto lens to photograph this subject. Well, you can see the framing I did on the left side of your screen, which is a vertical frame and the subject I want is a statue placed on the shelf. And in the right side of the screen, I have the perspective view and I set the stage lights so that the most emphasis is on the statue. Of course, it goes without saying that I used a rectangular light as a soft light for more emphasis. So now that we've done with the lightings, let's check the parameters of the camera that I've used for this shot. So as you can see, the spec ratio for this frame is 0 0.77 and I used a 105mm lens which is a very popular lens for close-ups. Just be aware that the focus method in this camera is set on tracking mode. And in tracking mode you have to select the subject you want to focus on. So here I want to focus on the statue so I select it. And now even if the camera moves, the focus will remain on the statue and the rest of the elements will be blurred. And now that it's time to frame it, it's better to use the rule of thirds technique again. And in this regard, I match the intersection of these vertical and horizontal lines exactly on the shoulder of the statue. And with this, the desired subject is placed on the right third of the image. And finally, let's jump into the sequencer of this shot. And as you can see, when I play this sequence, the scene is animated with a vertical movement, although very little. By the way, if you want to learn a very cool tip in making animations, don't miss the video on the screen. So guys, I hope that the content of this video was useful for you. If you have any opinion or questions, leave it to the comment section. Take care of yourself, see you in the next videos.